So next, we are going to, tell, to talk about parents, how to work with parents. I think that's, that was one of our important questions yesterday, how to involve parents in the using of digital uh, technologies. All right, and uh, you probably had in your little uh, file um, a leaflet about, it was in French, I'm sorry, about uh, a book called La Famille Tout Écran. Uh, which is a production uh, by the CLEMI. The CLEMI is an institution, it's an operator of uh, the ministry that deals with the question of uh, education to med media education. Yeah. Uh, and they produce and they train a lot. And uh, they, uh, of course, uh, we are at the moment, we start the Semaine de la Presse et des Médias. Yeah, it's going to be on Monday. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. It will be on Monday. You're going yeah. to, talk about, to, yeah. tell, uh, to talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Vincent. So, Vincent. hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Vincent Cocaz and I'm uh, an instructor for the CLEMI, so Centre pour l'Education aux Médias et à l'Information, uh, which literally means Centre for Media and Information Literacy. Um, so, what is the CLEMI in, uh, in a few words? Um, it is the agency responsible for media and information liter literacy uh, throughout the whole of the French educational system. Uh, it is part of the Ministry of National D Education in France. Uh, since its uh, creation in 1983, um, the CLEMI's mission has been to train teachers and teach students uh, to be socially aware in their use of media, both traditional and uh, digital medias, uh, thus fostering a better understanding of the world around them and, most importantly, developing their critical thinking. Um, it achieves this objective with a network consisting of a national team, which I'm a part of, and an, a team in each and every one academy in France. Um, we also create partnerships with information media and platforms to implement our projects and activities in schools. Uh, just to give you a couple examples, uh, what Pascal was talking about, uh, it is called the School Press and Media Week. It was created in 1990. Um, it gives students an opportunity to learn about diversity and pluralism in news media and uh, to discuss this with uh, information professionals. Um, last year it federated 17,000 schools, 210,000 teachers and 3,350,000 students. Um, another activity, another main activity is called Mediatics, uh, which is a national contest uh, which goal is to promote school medias um, all around France and um, a lot of those cool medias are digital medias, uh, web, uh, web radios, web TVs or web, ma web magazines. Um, last but not least, we also create and distribute resources towards teachers and students, such as the guide Where Does Information Come From? or video resources called Dicli Critique, uh, which mainly focus, for example, on YouTubers or YouTube. Um, when I took a look at today's program, it read that we need to mobilize uh, teachers, especially in primary and secondary uh, schools, um, in the field of media literacy and uh, digital literacy. Um, of course, at the CLEMI, we strongly agree because that is our main mission. But a couple, a couple of years ago, we felt that if you're only uh, working with teachers and students, uh, you're mi missing a key actor. Uh, in what we call in French the educational community. I don't know if that's a term you can use in English. Yeah. Um, and that actor is the parents. Um, they are the ones that set the rules or don't set the rules at home um, towards the use of smartphones, computers, well, less and less computers, but uh, smartphones, tablets. And uh, sometimes we also forget uh, video, <coughs> video games consoles, uh, which, um, which is a main aspect in the digital life of, um, of pupils. Um, they are also the ones that are asking more and more about medias, about digital medias, about information, about digital informations, um, especially since they hear so much about fake news uh, from an American president that I would won't name today. Um, therefore, uh, we decided first to run a national survey directed at parents to learn more about their needs regarding digital media and information literacy. What do you want? What do you need to know? 78% um, I'm sorry, yeah. 78 of the parents answered that they wanted uh, their children to have media and information literacy classes. And more importantly, 83% uh, wanted to know more about how they could protect and accompany their children on the internet. Um, so we decided to edit a, a whole guide. I'm sorry, Mark, but it, 
It is a paper guide. A paper guide. It's, not, it's a textbook, basically. Um, it's directed at parents and families. Um, it is full of advice. Uh, we wanted really something that could be directly uh, helpful uh, to parents. We didn't want to shame parents into saying to them, what you're doing is wrong, you need to do it, you need to do that. That was not the goal of this guide. Um, so in this guide you will find, uh, uh, it only exists in French, but I'm going to leave a, a couple of them um, after this presentation. Uh, for those of you who speak French, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so there's a lot of uh, statistics, advice, good practices, um, organized around five themes. Uh, that emerged from the survey I just told you about. So you can see this is the, I don't know how to, uh, to translate, like the, the whole screen family. So it's um, three kids, three years old, an eight year old and a 16 years old, which we felt was three key ages um, in a digital life of a, of a child. Um, so the themes are how to access quality information, uh, that is also how to process information, how to check information that you could come across on social networks, for example. Um, a main thing we have is um, on Facebook or YouTube, every single information you come across are put on the same level. Uh, they look the same, but uh, they don't have the same quality. So that's, uh, that was the main focus of the guide. How to use social networks. Uh, can I post anything I want on YouTube? Can I post a photo of another child on Snapchat without their consent, etc., etc.? How to control screen time. That was, um, that was one of the main uh, questions the parents uh, would ask uh, in, in the survey. Um, what we did is we, of course, we asked uh, psychiatrists, specialists of the question, but in the guide there is also a quiz for the parents to evaluate their own consumption of screen. Um, the main thing behind that was saying if you spend the, um, the whole lunch on your, on your smartphone, then your, your children will want to do the, the same thing. So first you evaluate what is your link to screens and social networks, and then you can talk about it with your kids. Um, how to protect children from uh, violent contents, both on television but also on social networks. Uh, again, YouTube, Snapchat and everything. And how to be involved as a, as a parent. If I have a problem, who could I turn to? Uh, which association could help me? Um, can I talk about it with the teachers? Um, we, with this guide, uh, we also did um, a kit of um, how can teachers also use it? Um, we, we did what we call Café des Parents, so Parents Coffee, so, so that teachers and parents can meet uh, to talk about this guide and to, 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 to talk to each other about what they want to do about it. Uh, just a quick word about uh, distribution, because that was a concern for us. How can we give get to the parents uh, with this guide. Um, so what we did is uh, we created a partnership with the family-oriented sector of the French social security system, uh, which is called Caisse d'Allocation Familiale, uh, or CAF, that's the fourth logo you can see here. Um, they were a well, uh, great help to distribute um, this guide, um, and the guide did find a very large audience. We had to reprint it uh, several times, and we were working on a second, second version, because you have to update uh, those kind of guides really often. Um, and maybe, so, yeah, maybe someday an English version. Uh, so why did we want to do a paper guide? Uh, it's because the parents asked. Uh, it is a free guide, both in paper and in PDF on the website of the CLEMI. But every single time we were saying to the parents or even the teachers or every, uh, everyone we told about, there is a PDF version, they wanted a paper version. That's something you want to have in the living room because you want to talk about it with the children, you want to have it at hand. Um, so yeah, we were amazed how, how, how many people wanted a paper version. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Maybe the European Commission may be interested in translating in the family to écran. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Uh, uh, I've heard there will be another version or. A yeah, we're working on a, a yeah. second version. Yeah, a up to date version. version. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're starting right now to work on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Vincent. That was uh, an interesting point we discussed yesterday. So thank you for for giving us lots of information. Any questions uh, to Vincent, uh, Serge? Sorry. 
Thank you. I was very impressed by this uh, parent's guide and I was wondering uh, very often the let's say the good parents don't need such a, guy, mm -hmm. a guide and often the weaker parents don't read it because maybe it's a paper version and so forth. So my question is I was wondering how maybe how, what is your strategy how to motivate all the teach uh, all the parents maybe especially the weak parents how to use it and maybe what what goals to achieve what is the motivation uh, you you give them yeah i think what the survey showed is that there are not really good and, and bad parents uh, towards this it, there are only parents that are asking themselves questions because they were raised when there weren't social networks they didn't have a smartphone so I, i'm pretty sure um, every single parent at one point um ask himself or herself what what should i do uh, regarding screen times regarding social networks which but uh, i mean it, when you have a, an, an eight, eight year old at home that want to create a youtube channel i'm not sure any parents really know how to deal with it so um and i think the um, cafe des parents so co um, parents coffee i don't know how to translate it um is a good way to get the whole educational community uh together to discuss about it and then the what, what you call the good parents could exchange with the weaker parents, but I'm not sure that that's the, the, the right terms. Um, but I guess the weaker parents would be the one that need the guide the most, and um, they, they ask themselves so many questions that eventually they will get the guides um, at school or at CAF, Caisse d'Allocation Familiale, or stuff like that. So I'm not sure I answered the question. But. I think that the principals in the schools are very much involved uh, as yeah, well. Yeah. They try to imagine yeah, uh, yeah. new structures, so mm. say Café des parents or... Because this also deals with like cyberbullying and stuff like that. So yeah, the principals uh, are really interested. I think in there is a the the question. Yeah. Um, I have kind of a comment added to that. A very interesting guide, I will definitely look at it. In the JRC, where I work, that's part of the European Commission, uh, my colleagues have done studies on zero to eight year olds use of digital technologies. And uh, it's really intriguing area because uh, most of the studies currently start from about uh, kids being 10. Yeah, 11, yeah, 11, 11 12, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So exactly like I like your idea that you have those different age mm. groups. And uh, so within that study, there's no such guide available, but there's, uh, so I will uh, definitely talk to my colleagues and uh, see the links there. But um, it's an interesting topic, and it's um, exactly the exposure that kids have before they go to school, before they go to kindergarten on digital technologies, mm -hmm. and how they learn by just imitating their parents, like mm -hmm. you said, yeah. but also older siblings and friends. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, things coming up on that one. So we are also a little bit following the area. So this is uh, <laughs> good, good. Input. Yes, so Thomas, it echoes <coughs> your your uh, yeah. presentation, of course. Yeah, thank you. Just a very short comment because uh, I, this study is covering. There, actually, there are no weak or strong parents. Actually, <laughs> there is a psychological environment called virtual environment. Social media is done by psychologists, and it, it actually is targeting your brain. It uh, so it, uh, there is a saying that if you do not buy drugs do not use social media. <laughs> because actually it gives the happiness factor for the brain. It's actually proved already by this study already. And uh, there is a, a new movement uh, starting from Silicon Valley and Hollywood called Unplug. Uh, people are buying old mobile phones with no internet access. They are deleting all the profiles and they have a happy life. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to mention while uh, Perrine is there. Uh, thank you very much, Vincent. Thank you very much.